trying to cut the preliminaries because last week's message, it was like 40 minutes of just startup. And I was editing it, I was like, oh Lord, somebody stop me. Let me try to get this mess. Well, I want you to go spend time with your, with your families and, 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 and different things because this is the day set aside, you know, for fathers. And those of you that aren't fathers yet, keep working on it. That's, how, that's, that's the beauty of God's creation. He made working on it just all kinds of fun. I'm preaching in this house. Boy, y'all ain't ready for this kind of gospel. Yeah, ain't no harm in working on it. You got to be married now. Well, I thought, I thought I was at ABC. I thought I was at ABC. I, I felt like some, some things are just understood. Amen. 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 And don't, you know, don't have them if you're not going to take care of them. Can I say that? Don't have them if you're not. And, you know, we got all kinds of situations. And I understand blended families. And you do the best you can. You have some here. Some may live somewhere else or whatever, whatever. But you need to be with them when you can. I don't understand folks that live by themselves and got kids other places. Why are you not near your kids? You get one shot at this. See, well, but when you don't preach about this stuff, I mean, see... This is, this is the reason we have the problems we have. Because after 10, 15 years pass, and you've been living the life as, like you didn't have none, then when they get older, they be wondering, why weren't you there? Now, I understand situations where it's a situation. That's a different thing. But, man, you just chilling somewhere and your kids are... Amen. Can I just preach? I don't know how to be anything else other than what we've been all this time. Ain't nothing changed. It, it's been like that since day one, and that's what it's going to be. If we, either we're going to take care of the issues, or we're just going to sit up here and make music and just pass out when we hear the organ or something. I don't know. But I want to deal with what's wrong with this. So I ain't no protesting, no marching. Let's just deal with it in here. You won't have to march. These men be a father to their children, they won't have to be out there. With a sign. Um, dun, 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 dun. And child support and everything else just lacking. Yeah, that time you out there protesting, you could be with one of them. Throwing a ball or something. Or you could be working so you could buy him a ball. adamandbeliever.com forward slash greatest father dot pdf we're going to talk about the greatest father I got a father's day message I didn't get to do a mother's day message because we were outside but I'm going to do a father's day message because we're inside amen outside you know it was all about just get saved because we don't know and I was trying to preach to the folks in the neighborhood and amen but in here we're going to deal with the fathers today. Well, we're going to deal with the greatest father, and that's not you. You good. <laughs> You're not the greatest. The greatest father. Amen. God is the father of all those that choose Christ. God is not, look at somebody say, he's not the father of everyone. He is not the father of everyone. He's not. Let's settle that right now. He is not the father of everyone. So they need, y'all need to quit saying that. Trying to include every, no. No, that's coexist inclusion. God is not the father of everyone. He tells you specifically in scripture who he's the father of. The scripture, 1 Corinthians 8 and 6 says, But to us there is but one God, the father, of whom are all things, and we in him. Here you go right here. And one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. So if you ain't coming through Jesus Christ, God is not your father. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the father except by 
if you don't come through Jesus, if you come any other way, you're a thief and a robber. God is not your father. The Bible even said, and this is why you got to make sure you come through Christ. Because in the end, he's going to say, depart from me, you work of it. He's going to say, I know you not. You're not kin to me. You're not my relative. But I thought you was father of all, Abba, daddy, father. No. If you don't come through Jesus Christ, he doesn't know you. Can we get that clear? He loves and justly rewards those that do what? Honor him. When you honor him, he will reward you. You mean I got to do something to be rewarded? Yes. Did you just, were you just born? You always have to do something to be rewarded. Yeah. So he rewards those that honor him. Honor him like what? Bring him gifts? Bring him, yeah, bring him the, the ultimate gift. The living sacrifice that is holy and acceptable unto him. And that's your reasonable service anyway, so you ain't getting nothing for that. But if you live right before him, then that's honoring him. And you don't honor him with your lips. Anybody can sing. Some of the punkiest punks that can punk are the best singers. They can make that music. Can they make that music? They can make that music. Have a choir and every voice is on point. Perfect. Perfection. You know how they do. And God said they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. That's not true honor. If you honor him, it's got to be in spirit and what? In truth. It's the only way to worship him. In spirit and in truth. But that's who he rewards. Can I just preach a simple holiness message this morning? It's not complicated. It's impossible to honor him without treating his sons and daughters fair. So you can't even honor him if you treat people bad. If you treat your brothers and sisters in Christ bad, you can't honor him. You're not honoring him. Let Vicky start treating Landon and Jonathan bad. Then she's dishonoring me. Well, now Cameron... Both of us, everybody, <laughs> getting dishonored. Amen. So if you are a son or a daughter, then you treat your brother and sister right. That's like, I mean, how many, how many of you got a whooping because you was messing with your brother? I mean, that was like the leading cause of beatdown growing up. The leading cause was you messing with somebody that's kin to you. Is that not the leading cause of a whooping? That's the number one reason. The belt came out. Like old folks say, the strap came out. Strap means anything. Belt just confines you to one tool. When you say strap, that could be anything that's long and slingable. That's the way it was at my house. Strap come out. My dad, anything. Any, I mean, he just reached for stuff. He just, anything. Give me one of these watches. Just give me one of these. Just anything. <laughs> Yeah, and so that was this. That's why you got a whooping, because you're dishonoring him. You're dishonoring the house when you can't get along with one another. You're messing with the spiritual fruit of peace and long suffering, and gentleness, and goodness, and meekness, and temperance. So you're messing up the fruit when you are cantankerous and can't get along with folks. I'm preaching in here. So you can't honor God treating people that way. He measures your love for him by how you love your brothers and sisters. I know I don't preach for claps because I don't need them because the Bible says it. As long as the Bible said it, I don't need no claps. I like them though. Y'all keep doing it. But as, as long as the word said, I don't need no claps. It's right here. Matthew 25 and 40. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have what? In this parable, he's saying, When you do it, when you give, when you love, whatever you do to the brethren, you do it unto me. Anybody can tell God they love them. I mean, they give God props when they go get awards on the, the, the hip hop awards. I want to thank God. 
But how do you treat people? With God, it is a family affair. He commands that we what? Love one another as he has loved us. This is the greatest example of a father that our world has known. This is the greatest example to command that we love each other as he has loved us. Amen? You're not going to reward your kids if they treat all the other kids terribly. And God's not going to reward you if you treat your kids terribly. John 15 and 12. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Is that not written in the Bible? Amen. Can I keep going? A great father teaches his children to love people, even when they do you wrong or hurt you. We got quiet on that. That's a great father that can teach it, man. Even if they do you wrong, man, you just, you know, you keep being you, you don't get it. Uh-uh, you, 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 you kill them. <laughs> so a lot of these kids are scratching their heads. Hmm, you out there, you got all this time for the protest. And you ain't spent no time with me. This keeps your heart clear to love others and not seek revenge against those who have what? We are, the Bible said avenge not yourselves. Christians don't take vengeance. We don't get people back. We don't plan to get folks back. We take wrong. Oh, for a man. Yeah, boy. Yeah, we just take wrong. I'll just be wrong. As a believer. Y'all don't like that, don't you? Okay, let me move on. Yeah, somebody don't like that. Somebody want to take vengeance. He said, don't avenge yourselves. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. He said, and I will repay. Let me do it. You don't do it. Amen. Because when you do it to somebody, now you owe it, and somebody's going to do it to you because you reap what you sow. Man, I'm, oof. Some folks ain't ready for this gospel. Yeah, it's, you just started a chain reaction. You get somebody back, somebody going to get you back. Then you get them back, somebody gonna get you again. Because you reap what you sow. That's why you let God handle it. And God will handle it. Amen. Matthew 5 and 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Oh. If you think the white man is your enemy, the Bible says what? Love your enemy. How you think the white man is your enemy and the black man is the one killing all the other black, killing the black? Uh oh, ain't nobody gonna clap on that. You gonna take a few isolated, man, I'll, I will pull the chart out and show you who's doing the killing. Had a lady that works in the newsroom uh, email me, and I can't post it because I don't wanna get her in trouble, but she was telling me how they sift through all of the black on black killings. They, they won't even, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of cases that come to them and they have to ignore it because they have to stay with the narrative to promote the race war for this upcoming election because that's what it's for. And so they have to just push it all to the side. I filter through all of the black killings. Yeah. Even sent me videos of vicious, savage killings in the black community that never made the news. Yeah, I mean, shooting cops, jumping in their cars and driving off in the police car. Never make the news. Yeah, but they going all the way back, getting the first black killing of a, by a white cop. The footage in black and white. and showing do the right thing back to back on BET. Why are you showing do the right thing back to, I mean, when it go off on one BET channel, the next BET channel start playing. I was looking at the grid, you know, the guy thing, and it was just back to back. Just when it go off, it come on again. 
do the right thing. Just to distract you. Just to distract you. But a great father teaches his children to love people even when they do you wrong. This keeps your heart clear to others. The Bible says, love your enemies. Bless them that what? Oh, that just ripped somebody's, somebody's heart almost stopped. That's, and it's hard. That's hard to do. This is, a hard, this is the hardest chapter, one of the hardest scriptures in the Bible. It really is. I've had to practice this stuff, and man, it's hard. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Do good to them that hate you. You don't tear the store up. You don't throw a trash can through the window. You don't turn the car over. You do good to them that hate you. That's if they hate you. Most of the cops I know are pretty cool. Look, ain't nobody going, uh oh, wait a minute now. You don't live, man, we in Texas. I had a cop the other day stop me, pulled me over in my Jeep, and he literally stayed out there for about 10 minutes talking to me, just talking. I mean, you know, and I'm like, if we're going to be friends, you're you going to have to take this ticket back. <laughs> but I was speeding. I wasn't paying no attention. I was speeding, and I, I had no excuse. When he came up, I, he said, brother, you, he, said, he, said, he didn't say brother. Because this white guy, he said, you know you're going, you was going 63 and a 45. I said, probably was. I said, I, I, I probably was. I said, when I come down that hill in the G, I like the wind to just be blowing, because I took the doors and stuff off. I do that, I said, man, you got me. He's like, this is a nice Jeep. He walked around the Jeep. He said, yeah, this, this is nice Jeep. He said, now your license plate, your little handle thing is obscuring it. I can't read the numbers. He said, you know, that's a violation. He said, do you have one on the front? He walked around to the front. I said, oh, you don't have one on the front. That's another violation. He said, but man, this Jeep looks so good. I don't even want you putting stuff on there like that. He said, so I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let you go. He said, I'm, I'm gonna let you go on those. So I'm, I got the ticket like, <laughs> no, you keep that ticket. You was speeding. I said, I, yes, yes, I was speeding. I was speeding. And it was so funny. I told him, I said, you know, I've seen on some of the spare tires, they have this little license plate that you can put on the spare tire. He said, oh, but that's so ugly. He said, your center caps, man. He said, these rock stars, you got to show the center cap. He said, don't put that on there. Yeah. I had a great run in with the law. We had a good time, almost. He did leave me with the ticket. He wasn't taking that ticket back. It's like, all this talking, are we friends now? I mean, but I deserve the ticket, I couldn't even get mad, but I'm just saying, your disposition, look at somebody and say disposition. Now, if I'd yell Black Lives Matter as soon as he walked up, I'd have got a ticket for all, everything. He'd have kept my license plate. Give it in. I want you to get a ticket driving without it. But he was just cool. We, you know, I just I always keep my, I respect him. Yes, sir. He said, you were speeding. I said, yes, sir, I was. Yes, sir. And I'm 50 years old. He's probably in his 30s or something. And I still called him, sir, because he got a shield, man. And a big old gun, taser, billy club. And he will beat the mess out of me. Are you kidding? I don't need them knots. That's going to hurt. I'm looking at all the stuff on his body, and I'm like, yes, sir. Whatever you say. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. And here's the thing that's going to send some folk to hell. The folks you hate ain't even your enemy. You gonna go to hell for hating something that happened 400 years ago? In your chest, you breathing hard, can't sleep. You mad at people now for 400 years ago? Folks could be mad at you for four years ago. Four years ago, stuff you did four years ago. 
Some of you four days ago. Four hours ago. You deserve to die. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them that despitefully use you. And what? Even when they come in after you? Persecuting you? It's continuous? You still supposed to pray for them? Yeah. And here's the thing that messes up the, ch the church. When prayer is not enough. I don't even understand that kind of language. I mean, prayer, you know, praying is good, but praying enough. Sometimes you got to do something. And pray for them, which despitefully use you. I mean, but you can't just pray. When you get up, what do you do? Do good to them that hate you. <laughs> hey, look. I mean, you may have a different interpretation of this. Well, see, over in the book of... What book? You read in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, they kill folk for this kind of stuff. In the Old Testament, they got killed too. That's the, that's the, the, you, you ain't looking at the reciprocation. God is trying to keep you alive right here. Do it his way. Through the Holy Ghost. See, this is, let me, let me finish because somebody is just feeling away. God gave us this example by sending his son to die regardless of how he was being treated and looked upon. Now, this is Jesus. Died regardless of how they treated him and looked upon him. He still died. He did not allow the behavior of others to sway his decision to love unconditionally. This is a great attribute for any father to have. God is the what? He's the author of unconditional love. So he sat there on the cross while they were spitting at him, doing all of the things they were doing. He sat there and said in Luke 23 and 34, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Forgive them while being murdered. This is the example he set for us. Can you do this? Will you do this? Or will you take vengeance? Can I preach in here? Oh, man. It's going to be the truth in here. Even when Adam sinned, God forgave him and clothed them. God never gives up on his children. How are you going to give up on a race of people and God never gave up on you? God never gives up on his children. He is what? He's always there to forgive and restore their relationship with him. Genesis 3 and 21. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God. This is after they sinned, after they disobeyed, after they ruined everything. The Bible said he made coats of skin and did what? He clothed them. He never stopped loving them. He never stopped caring about them. All fathers should model this example and never give up on their children. You. you don't give up on your children. Even when the relationship is strained by divorce, wedlock, or a tense parental relationship, a father should fight to show love to his own. Fight. Look at somebody and say fight. Are you fighting the justice system? Fight for your children. Amen. Amen. You wasn't fighting for custody like that. John 15 and 13. Greater love hath no man than this, than a man laid down his life for his friends. Amen. It's always about what, see that, that's this narcissistic society. These folk have kid after kid, just just having children everywhere, and don't spend and, and not trying to be near. Them. Not trying to have them in their life, not trying to love on them, not trying to keep them close and protect them from what's going on in this world. 
Look, somebody say, keep your word. Keep your word. Amen. Don't make no promise. You keep your word. Amen. And don't say you love. Show you love. Anybody can say it. Where are you? Show it. I'm preaching to the men today. Y'all thought I was just going just, to just lift up all the heroes. All right, some, we got some zeros that need. Amen. Need that H. Quit doing it, man. God spoke promises to give hope to us. This is what every father should do. When there is doubt and fear, the father. Look at somebody and say the father. The father should be the one to instill confidence in his family so they will not have to worry. The fa- Look at somebody say the father. Not the strong mother. The father. Luke 11 and 21, when a strong man arm keeps his palace, what happens? God always keeps his word. Though we may have to wait patiently for the fulfillment of it, It will come to pass. This is something that all fathers should do as well. Look at somebody say, keep your word. Keep your word. word. Don't put it out there if you can't do it. Ain't nobody asking you to do something you can't do. Just don't put it out there. But if you put it out there, you have to do it. You have to keep your word. Amen? Do not speak what you can't fulfill. Be sure to make make good on what you have spoken. This pattern of reliability builds faith and confidence in your family so they will what? Trust God through you. 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. For all the promises of God in him are what? Yea, and in him it is so. He's going to do what he promised unto the glory of God. Amen? No matter how far we went away from God, anybody went far away from God before? But no matter how far we get, when we truly repent and ask for mercy, God does what? What does he do? He grants it and what? Restores everything what? How? Back to what? Okay. Back to its original state. First John 1 and 9, if we confess our sin... He is faithful and just to do what? Forgive us our sin and do what? Because he knows you're going to, when you get saved, everything's not going to be perfect. You're going to want things to be, but you're going to go through a period of fumbling and bumbling. Most of it is because you don't have the knowledge you need and you got to learn. That's what church is about. Discipleship. Yeah, so it's going to be a period. Well, you got to go through and you got to be cleansed from unrighteousness and you got to get it back to the original state and all of that kind of stuff. But God said he'll do it. He's going to forgive you no matter what. Amen. So he never takes away our call to ministry. He never expels us as his children. He never withholds good things from us. God does not operate emotionally. But he is the epitome of logic and just behavior. God is for you. Look at somebody and say, he's for you. Look at somebody else and say, he's for you. That means he loves you. He's, he's on your side. He's not trying to put you in hell. He's trying to keep you from hell. And he's trying to keep you from hell on earth. I'm not waiting till I die for everything to be okay. He reigns with principles and precepts. Men that operate this way will have much success in this life. So if you treat people this way, don't expel them all the time. Don't just go off and go crazy and I hate you and boy, get out of my face. Just so just anger management issues. But if you can love and treat people right, you can have success in this life. Psalms 84 and 11. For the Lord, God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that what? No good thing will he withhold from them that do what? Man, man. 
God is not narcissistic. He literally can't be because he is already the greatest. Amen. You can't be narcissistic when you when you're everything. That's the problem, folk walking around thinking they're everything and they're nothing. That's narcissism. But God is everything, so he can't be narcissistic. But when men can submit and honor his greatness, a narcissist can't honor his greatness because he's too busy trying to be great. Yeah. Yeah, a narcissist can't come, narcissist can't come in church and lift his hands and worship because he thinks he's above that. Uh-oh. Yeah, he can't, he can't reduce himself. But when a man can submit and honor his greatness, they will humble themselves and esteem their own family as more important than themselves. That's a great father. When you make your family more important than yourself. Oh, the hand claps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, forget about yourself. Amen. Don't be worried about this rain. It ain't gonna come in here. Somebody. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> sound effects. Come on, Lord, add the sound effects. Hey, I meant that. God meant for that to be said. Amen. But that's, that's a good father. That's a great father that can humble himself and make his family more important than himself. Are you working for you or are you working for your family? Are you always praying about you or are you praying about your family? Are you in love with you or are you in love with your family? Because that's what God does, amen? Philippians uh, 2 and 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. You can't be no racist if you uh, esteem others better than yourself. You can't be a racist. You can't be prejudiced if you esteem others better than you. Mm, I feel some tension in here on this message. Amen. Y'all, I am not. I, when I did Color of Blood, and I, you know, I, I took a clip from Color of Blood and tried to upload it on YouTube, and they said it was hate speech. And took it down. Took it down and said it was hate speech because I was showing the history of the Negro. I showed the history of the Negro and what happened in Africa and how we were enslaved in Africa, how we sold our, you know, how our brothers and sisters sold each other. I showed all the conflict between the different tribes and different things. And I was just, con you know, y'all remember that, right? They took it down. That's hate speech. They want you to think white people invented slavery. The greatest father created us and is always what? He's always thinking about us. And this is a part where God really pulled me in close for the last few months to just really show me how much he loved me and how much he thinks of us. Because literally, I can go through all 12 of the Truth Behind Hip Hops, I can go through the three Era of Man videos, and I can literally pull out something that is happening right now in each one of them and how they were just, I mean, just the foreknowledge, forethought. Oh my goodness, it's all in there. And God began to tell me, this is how much I love you. I gave you this information so you could prepare. You could prepare the people I love. So they would know, amen. They won't be shocked by it. They will know what's gonna happen. So. The greatest, uh, the greatest father created us and is always thinking of us. As great as he is, he still inclines his ear to hear our little old measly pleas when we pray. When you get on your knees and you pray, this big, great God stoops down to hear you. He loves us more than the entire world. 
we are his blessed creation. When a man can love his family this way, he will find peace in his life no matter how bad things get. That means when your child is in trouble, your world stops and you incline your ear to listen and hear their plea. What is wrong? And a good father will even say, what did I do? Was I the cause of it? Ooh, the amens are thin in this house. Come on now. Clap something. That was good. But you have to be that way. You got to, it just has to be some self-denial there. If you're going to be a good father. When a man can love his family this way, he will find peace in this life no matter how bad things get. Love covers a what? A multitude of faults. The same love that God covers our sins with should cause a man to sacrifice his own life for his family. 1 John 3 and 16. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he did what? He laid down his life for us. And we ought to do what? Lay down our lives for the brother. Summary! <laughs> but in this last hour, the issue is what? How many of you know that in this last hour, the issue is fatherlessness? Okay. How many of you don't, don't know that? Okay. Yeah, turn on the TV, turn on the movie turn on anything, you're going to see the issue is some father messed up. Fatherlessness is the devil's ploy to cause hatred and division in the earth. So it will no longer resemble the peaceful Eden that we were created in. The devil is upset because God loves us more than him. Yeah, loves us more than him. The devil is upset because God loves us more than him. He's upset because we are God's beloved children and he is a bastard son. Somebody, my God. That's what I mean. That word, boy. Whoa. Ooh. I mean, it's a bad, it sounds bad. It sounds a lot worse than it is. But that's what Satan is. He's a bastard son. He don't have no father. If he don't go through Jesus, he can't, he can't be a son either. He got to embrace Jesus too. He don't treat Jesus right? <laughs> right. So, because he is a bastard son, he seeks to raise up a bastard generation to overthrow somebody. Uh, Y'all going to let me get to <laughs> Whoa, whoa. Well, let me get through the sentence. Good that word, boy, somebody. <laughs> so he seeks to raise up a bastard generation to overthrow the peace of God's beloved. Bastard just means fatherless. <laughs> I don't know what it meant in your house, but in the dictionary... <laughs> In the dictionary, it means fatherless. So because the devil is fatherless, he's trying to make everybody else fatherless. This is why so many fathers avoid their own children. How do you avoid your own child? Avoid, like, until the funeral. And will not sacrifice anything for them. Won't sacrifice anything for their own children. Y'all, this is a spirit. This is not just humans deciding to be this way. It's a spirit that gets in men. It's the spirit of this bastard. Spirit of fatherlessness. To make you a bastard just like the devil. To where you don't even care and your life is more important and what you want now who you want to be is more important than your own children 
They could have made all kinds of promises that they would never do this to their children when they were young because they remember how it hurt, how they were hurt by it, how it hurt in their home. And they can make all kinds of promises, never do this to their children, never do what was done to them. But they get caught up in the cycle of fatherlessness since the pull of the enemy is so strong in this last stand. The devil is keeping you from making that phone call. The devil is keeping you from spending that time. It's the devil. Because he wants you like him. Can I keep going? God not only loves us, but he gave us the best example of a great father we could ever have. It's written in the pages of the Bible how he loved and was devoted to men that served him. How he raised up men of dysfunctional upbringings to do great and mighty works. How he gifted and called regular men to perform miraculous feats. How he loved women enough to give them what they prayed for. How he provided, protected, and preached to his beloved creation through signs, wonders, and prophets. God loves us and wants to father us even when we do not deserve it. He wants to forgive and restore all that was lost. He does not count our past, what? Against us. He does not bring up our failures or shortcomings. He does not think of himself without considering us first. He suffers with us. He endures with us. He celebrates victories with us. He's always there. This is the example that all fathers should follow. If you do these things in your home, for your family, you will be a great father. Amen? You know, I, I had a, matter of fact, it was a guy that told me this, this week, he said, man, you know, pastor, I, you know, I was about to be offended by you because I would ask you questions and you wouldn't answer them. And, and you would just kind of brush me off and blow me off when I would say certain things. And I was really looking, he said, but now I understand something. He was like, I was about to be offended because I was trying to put you in position that only the Holy Ghost could be. He said, I wanted you to guide, lead, and guide me in all truth. But I realized that's the Holy Ghost job. Amen. And I'm going to let the Holy Ghost do his job because I don't want that responsibility for you. But folks want that. And a lot of times it's due to fatherlessness. They didn't have that growing up. So when they come and, and hear a man, they, they, want, they, they want you to tell them step by step how to be a man. How to handle how to, And you can't do that. You got to mix what's being preached with the power of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost has a lead in God. Amen. And when you do that, that's when you learn what true love from God is and this 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 is the best passage I read it every wedding I've ever done I read this because it's so important this tells you exactly what love is so if we're going to love one another if you're going to love your, your, your husband your wife you're going to love your family you're going to love your children if we're going to have the love of God then we got to love like the Bible says love and here is the love of God in this passage 1 Corinthians 13 and 4 he describes love and he says love does what? Doesn't give up. And is what? Kind. Love what? Envieth not. Love vaunted not itself and is not what? It's not prideful. It doth not behave itself. Don't act a fool. Seeketh, it's not narcissistic. It seeketh not its own. It's not provoked. It taketh not account of evil. It means if you mistreat me, that don't stop love. I know this message is too hard for somebody. It rejoices not in unrighteousness. That means it don't get happy when you fail. But rejoices with what? The truth. Here we go. It beareth all things. 
It believeth all things. It hopeth. And how long does it stick around? It endureth all things. Love never faileth. But only love is going to endure all things. Amen? Everyone stand to your feet. Oh, we got out early. I told you. Listen, I'm going to be on this. I'm going to be talking about this till Jesus comes because I feel like he's getting ready to come. Anybody feel like that? I just don't see a long eye. Nah, things have just gone crazy. And they're going to get probably much worse. And so we have to make sure we are actively praying. We're actively seeking God. We're actively having a true, strong faith relationship with the Lord to make it through this end time. But the thing we have to make sure of is that we don't have offenses as fathers. And I'm talking to the fathers now because I just preached the whole sermon to you. As fathers, we have to try to model God's greatness as a father. Amen? Amen. Big shoes to fill. You're gonna error. You're gonna make mistakes. Some of us waited until a whole bunch of stuff had happened to start trying to do this. So you got to gather up all the stuff and try to make it right. But with the power of God, you can do this. Amen? You can be a good father. Amen? Amen. All the fathers, just come up here and join me up here. Let's isolate you. And I know some of you are still waiting on children to come or whatever, and it's going to happen. As long as you got faith, it's going to happen. But look at all these fathers. This is enough fathers to flip Texas upside down, I know. Come on. Amen. Amen. Yeah, come on. Look at all these. We have fathers in overflow. Oh, Lord, Lord. I thought this was everybody. Well, amen. Anyone else? All right. All right. Look at, look at all these men. Y'all look around. Just look at the men. Look at the men. Amen. I'm praying y'all strength through this time, y'all. It's a rough time. It's a rough time, but it's going to be when God does things for the home, when he does things for the church or whatever, he, he's going to use men. He's going to use men. Now, he uses women, too. Amen, women? But, amen, this is the front line right here. Amen, this is the front line right here. It just is. So we, we, we know who God has called to stand in this hour. You got to stand strong for your homes. You got to stand strong for your children. And the number one thing, you can't quit. You can't quit. One thing you've learned, if you've been here over the last few years, you know we don't quit here. We keep fighting. And we don't fight with fist, we fight with faith. Amen? So you have to have your faith build up, built up so you can stand in this last hour, brothers. I mean it. I mean it. You gotta stand. Amen? Everyone bow your heads all over the building. All of these fathers, just lift your hands up. Father God, Amen. I thank you, Lord, for these men that are standing here in this last hour, God. As tough as it may seem, as tough as it may feel, as tough as the world is making it, God, our world has gone feminine. And Father, we understand your Bible said that in the end times, it will be a woman riding the beast. Not a man, a woman which shows that the order of our world will be perverted to where women will be in charge. The whole, even the Catholic Church is led by a woman, St. Mary. Not your mother, but the Queen of Heaven. Not the mother of Christ, the Queen of Heaven. And she reigns and rules the Vatican and she rules that. And Father, this is the whore that rides the beat. All of these things we saw and 
your word says that when John saw it, he marveled. How could this be? In the end, where women and femininity will be at the forefront. And Father, we're seeing the result of that. We're seeing the result of feminism. We're seeing the result of women in positions where there should be men. We're seeing the results of women that are the head of the homes and no men are. And men are yielding and, and, and giving in and conceding to women being over them. And Father God, we just, I just pray right now for these men here under the sound of my voice that they stand strong in this hour no matter what. No matter what society tells them, no matter what social media says, no matter what TV says, Father, that they will be heroes in their homes, heroes for their children, that their children, Father God, will learn of you through them. They will be examples of how you handle things, God. And your greatness as a father will be exemplified through them, through all of us, God. In Jesus' name. Now, all men in the house, lift your hands. And Father, all of the future fathers in here, I pray for them right now, God, that, that they would gain knowledge of how to be a father and be strong in their home and build their faith so that when the time comes, that Father God, nothing will be lost. But your men will stand up in this hour and declare your wondrous works how you even brought children to situations that seemed impossible and they will love and cherish their children. Father, in this hour, help men to stand strong for their families. It's not too late. It's not too late. It's not too late. Touch their hearts so that they will go and mend situations that need to be mended, rectify situations that need to be rectified in Jesus' name. And I speak against every curse every witch, every charm, every hex, every vex, everything, Father God, that will come against your people in this hour, come against your men standing strong. I speak against the spirit of Jezebel. Father God, that she would be exposed and thrown from the window so that all will see who was behind this foolish ploy. We speak against Jezebel. We speak against Lilith. Father God, we speak against Samiramis. We speak against the queen of heaven, the spirit of femininity, Father, that will overtake your order in this hour. We speak against it. And Father God, every witchcraft charm or every witchcraft spell that is holding women barren in this hour to prevent, the, prevent them from even having children, we speak against it right now, that that be cut off. Every witch that is, that is causing barrenness, Every spirit that is causing it, we speak against incubus, we speak against succubus, every night spirit that will come to try to hold the womb captive, that it be released right now. Father God, we speak fertility, godly fertility, how you set our systems up, how you set our bodies up in Jesus name. And Father, today, as these Satanists gather to try to pull down this new world order, Father God, we are not ignorant to the devil's devices. We speak against that right now, that it will not hinder any of us in here. God, we're going to enjoy our day. We're going to enjoy our evening. We're going to enjoy our families. We're going to enjoy each other. Every spell that is cast will fall to the ground right before us. It may land on someone else, but it's going to fall to the ground in front of us. We declare it by the power of the Holy Ghost and the authority you've given us in the earth. Father God, the devil has no power here. He has no power in this building. He has no power over any life that would declare your word and your will. So Father, we'll continue to stand in this hour. And be strong for you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, fellas. Praise God for you. Praise God for you. Amen. God is good. How many of you know God will do what he says? I asked the Lord when he called me to pastor, the first thing I said was, 
God, I don't want to pastor a church full of women. I said that. I said, Father, I mean, I, not say, I said, God, if we're going to, if things are going to change, we need me. And God has done that. He's kept a healthy supply of strong men at ABC. Amen. Yeah. Women, you should be clapping, especially if you're single. Somebody get this mic from me. 